Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I've just got a quick little update about Phoenix Point. First, Snapshot Games has just released gameplay footage showing off the alpha build for Phoenix Point. If you're signed up for the newsletter or are receiving the fig updates, then you probably already know this. But if you don't, then be sure to go check them out. There's an 8-minute video narrated by Julian Gollop over on IGN and a 2-hour video over on Unstable Voltage's YouTube channel. I'll include links to both of them in the description. Second, as of the moment I'm making this video, there are only 30 hours left on the Phoenix Point crowdfunding campaign. At the moment, the campaign is sitting at $725,000, which is still $125,000 short of the second stretch goal, the floating Phoenix base. If you've been thinking about backing the project, then this would be the time to do it before the campaign is over. Snapshot Games has stated that they'll be accepting late pledges, and missed stretch goals may still be offered as post-release DLC content, but the only way to make sure it's going to be included in the game is if it's unlocked before the campaign ends. Now, I'd like to talk a little about the gameplay footage that Snapshot Games just released. Unfortunately, the footage is all exclusive to certain venues, so it would be inappropriate for me to make use of it, I've got an assortment of screenshots and animated GIFs released by Snapshot Games, but I know that most of you will prefer to watch the actual footage, which I encourage you to do. So instead, for this video, I'll just be briefly going over some of the basic information that we learned from the alpha gameplay demo. I'll make it quick. First, the three basic classes are included in the demo. Although they were previously referred to as the Assault, Marksman, and Heavy, here, they're present as the Grunt, Sniper, and Heavy, marked with the Double Chevron, Crosshair, and Stacked Bullets icons, respectively. The player will be able to mix and match equipment in the final game, but in the Alpha, the three classes come with default loadouts that determine their abilities. The Grunt has an assault rifle and two grenades, the Heavy has a machine gun and shoulder-mounted rocket launcher, and the Sniper has a sniper rifle and pistol. The UI is visually similar to other tactical games. Units have pip-based health bars above their heads, as well as small doll icons that let you tell their current status at a glance. A body location that appears in yellow is injured, and a body location that appears in red has been completely disabled. If the unit has any armor, then that will be represented by small armor icons above the health pips. The currently selected soldier is marked with a yellow indicator, and their current movement range is indicated by the blue outline. If the player moves their soldier farther than the blue outline, then an orange outline will appear, indicating their maximum dash movement range for the turn. Moving within the blue outline takes a single action point, while moving beyond the blue outline will use up both of the soldier's two action points. Down here in the UI, we can see the general planned layout. On the bottom left, we have a close-up picture of the currently selected unit, an abstracted health bar, and a will point counter. Near the center, we have a cluster of information, including line-of-sight indicators, weapon selection icons, and the ability bar. On the right, we can see the currently equipped weapon, the weapon's base damage, the weapon's base range, and the special weapon abilities, such as this icon, which indicates that the assault rifle can be used for return fire. I'll come back to that in a moment. Now, let's take a slightly closer look at some of these UI features. We'll start with the line of sight indicators. Any enemy that the soldier can see will be abstractly represented by an appropriate icon on the line of sight bar. In this case, the soldier can see the Crab Queen, three Crab Men, and one Larva. The color indicates the target's current status. Yellow means the target is within weapon range and is currently being flanked. Red indicates the target is within weapon range but is under cover, and gray indicates that the soldier can physically see the target, but can't shoot at it. This information is also displayed with the line of sight indicators that will appear when you are moving your soldier, making it easier to tell what enemies you will be able to fire on before committing yourself to a movement action. Now, let's take another look at the ability bar. There are only a small number of abilities in the Alpha, and they all appear to be linked to the weapon loadouts rather than the classes. Universal abilities include the Standard Attack Action, the Overwatch Action, and the Recovery Action, which can be used to recover will points. You'll notice that the Overwatch Action has a will point icon on it, 
indicating that it will cost one will point to use, so you won't be able to rely on Overwatch spam. Gun and Run is an ability that appears to be specifically linked to the assault rifle, allowing the soldier to take an extra movement action at the cost of two will points. Similarly, the pistol grants access to the Extra Attack ability, which grants a bonus attack action, again at the cost of two will points. Although I don't have a screenshot of it, the sniper rifle also has a special Targeted Attack ability, which allows the player to target a specific body part on an enemy at the cost of one will point. Normally, the player would only be able to target specific body parts when targeting oversized boss enemies, such as the Crab Queen. But a soldier with a sniper rifle will be able to cripple or disable smaller enemies with precise attacks, as long as he has the will points to spare. Now let's briefly revisit the Return Fire ability, which appears to be linked to the Assault Rifle and Pistol. As long as a soldier is equipped with one of these weapons when they end their turn, they'll automatically fire back at any enemy who shoots at them, though attacks made in this manner will only inflict half normal damage. But enemies can also make use of Return Fire if they're equipped with an appropriate weapon, such as the Crabman Gunners who are present in the Alpha. When selecting a target with an attack action, some additional information is added to the UI. On the left, a damage synopsis appears, showing how much damage the attack will inflict after all modifiers are applied. On the right, a similar display will indicate any return fire damage that the enemy might inflict in return. This UI will also indicate any special effects that the attack might have. In this case, the Crab Queen's leg will be disabled by the heavy's attack. Disabling different locations will impose different penalties on units, often disabling certain attacks or abilities, or causing ongoing bleeding damage. As far as enemies go, it's nice to finally get to see some of these guys in action. The demo shows off two versions of the basic Crab Man, a long-range gunner and a melee variant with a heavy shield that provides mobile cover. It also has the cute little larva and the massive intimidating crab queen who spawns those larva, while also making use of devastating claw and stomp attacks. But of course, the final game will feature many, many more enemies and mutations. There's a lot more I could say about the footage, but I think that covers most of the basics. If you want more details, I strongly encourage you to check out the official video footage I've linked below. In particular, be sure to check out Unstable Voltage's channel, because he actually has access to the alpha demo, and he'll be doing additional videos and live plays in the near future. But it's important to remember that while the alpha gives us a good overall idea of what the developers have planned, it's far from complete. For example, in the demo, attacks automatically hit, and weapons inflict a flat, base damage, before being modified by things like range, cover, and armor. In the final game, bullets will have hit percentages and more realistic ballistic trajectories that will check for potential collateral damage, while weapons will have a wider range of base damage before modifiers. Still, even for a game in such an early state, I think the demo looks very promising. If it already looks this good, then who knows how great it might end up looking when the game is released in another 18 months. I, for one, can't wait to find out and I'll continue following all the latest news on the game's development. But for now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about Phoenix Point, you can find out all the latest information by visiting the official website or the crowdfunding campaign on FIG. You can also check out the alpha gameplay footage for yourself on IGN or Unstable Voltage's YouTube channel. Links are in the description.